hello welcome back to the spider's web and in this video we're going to be painting dread ball minis yes well a dread ball mini we're going to be using vallejo's light gray and my painter spaceship exterior vallejo's white and i'm a painter's dark tone wash rough iron plate mail metal and pure red as you can see from the lineup you're getting so <clears throat> We are going to be doing a series of um, minis at this precise moment in time. We have a striker, a jack, the captain and one of the prone minis of the um, Draconis All-Stars. Now I'm not painting these the same colour as the D Draconis All-Stars um, kits because I don't want to. I want to do my own team because I bought them so I can. Very simple. So we're going to be using light grey over all the armor parts. Um, and this basically is to give it a bit of a nice coating to start from. Um, well, so this is the base coat. We've primed it in black and then we've done a zenithal highlight of white from the basically the 45 degree angle downwards so that it covers some of the um, armour and keeps the recesses relatively dark. Um, now you can see the difference between the jack and the striker. The striker has a very smooth shoulder pad and as you can see from this one, this one has a bit of a, a lump on it which has a short pipe running over the lump. I don't know why, it's designed that way, I don't think there's any particular rhyme or reason for it it's just the way it is this one is the captain <clears throat> this is the extra mini um, it was grey to start off with but as I say I've primed it exactly the same way as the others because I didn't want any sort of dis um, disconnects between the minis now the colour scheme I'm going for is going to be a bit of a surprise you'll find out what it is as time goes on if you follow rugby which I don't I haven't followed football or rugby or sport in any shape or form other than like sports entertainment as in WWE and TNA wrestle uh, TNA wrestling and anything like that um, I've enjoyed watching that I enjoy watching the Olympics and athletic things like that but football rugby anything like that i'm not interested whatsoever but i've picked this particular color scheme because this is the team for the town where i was born and raised oh that's the guard by the way and um that is the mini we're going to be painting because we're going to need to give these minis a little bit of time to dry after applying this all over wash of the dirt tone so yeah the um I've painted a striker, I've painted a jack and I've painted one of the prone minis already. I basically primed and um, primed, base coated and washed um, four of one of each mini apart from the captain obviously um, beforehand to test out what I wanted to do and I hadn't painted the guard so I thought it might be an idea while the guard is dry and ready to paint to do it in the first video and then we can show you how I prepared the others to paint. In this short series of painting of these videos I'm going to be doing one of each type of player character. So I'll be doing one striker, one jack, one guard, one of the prone minis and the captain on camera. That is it. I'm not going to do all of them because once you've seen one you've seen them all really. There's not much that is different apart from the slight change of poles in some of them. Now this prone figure unfortunately wasn't dry terribly well and the grey is coming through into the wash and discolouring it quite dramatically so uh, between dabbing off with a paper towel and a dry moist brush, um, yes I use the word moist, deal with it, um, I, um, I decided to get on as much of the wash off that particular mini and I'm going to give it a wash later on off camera 
spots here we are with the um, the guard and I'm painting him on the armor in the spaceship exterior now I'm going to try and leave some of the um, recesses with the, uh, the dark tone wash but occasionally you will see that I struggle to do that and it doesn't look right so things like there where there's a lot of things you'll be able to see that there's a little bit there but on the sides um, leaving a little bit wasn't really an option to do because unfortunately the detail there wasn't too deep so it looked a bit iffy trying to leave areas on that part but there are the three little grooves on the triangular bits on the front and back of the um, uh, shoulder pads and I do come back later on and put some wash in those to try and pick them out just a little bit but yeah we're going trying to do all the um, parts of this in exactly the same way as we applied the grey only again being a bit more fastidious in, fastidious in where we paint this because we don't want to get it all over everywhere even though we are going later on with um, the rough iron um, but I uh, I do want to try and keep this as neat as possible um, and the reason I'm not showing the wet palette today is because I'm doing absolutely zero blending um, <laughs> that's the reason the paint that I'm showing in the tub is or the little pots is the paint that is going on there's no blending whatsoever I'm not changing the color or anything um, it's just going on the wet palette just so I can get it onto the brush you know it's there's no other reason than that so I didn't see any reason to show the wet palette because there's no blending involved not blending mixing involved it's just the straight color out of the pot and uh, going back to what I was saying about the rugby team that I supported I'm not quite sure as to what to name this but it's got to be something that's uh, close to that team name um, because bear in mind I live in Wigan and I will probably be playing this game with Wiganers so you really need to wind them up before we even start so <laughs> um, that's my that's my excuse I'm sticking to it <laughs> um, so yeah there we are I'm just looking for a name so later on in the video I'm going to ask I'm going to explain a little bit more and ask for some suggestions but there are specific um, stipulations to this one right so we're using the um, rough iron now and we're going through going into all the areas that um, isn't armor that is metal because these are actually robots they're not androids and there's no um, what's the word living matter though they're all it's a team of robots so any so it's either going to be armor or metal parts it's not, it's not going to be any diff any uh, anything in between so <clears throat> um, that's why I'm doing the rough iron here and the reason I'm doing rough iron is because I like the effect of having the rough iron on the background as the base color and then doing like a highlight effect with whatever metallic color that you want it to be um, so in this case it's the plate mail um, plate mail plate mail metal I also use it under gold copper bronze whatever I just like the effect it gives um, I don't particularly like um, going over black with silver it was a complete coverage and then giving it a wash I, I, I just like it this way it's just my personal preference and that's how I'm going to stay with it um, so now <clears throat> as you may have noticed I'm going over certain areas with the spaceship exterior yes that's the name of the paint I couldn't remember what it was then and uh, trying to give it a bit more of a smoother look because I'm not terribly good at painting white <coughs> especially in this amount every you know little bits here and there in white fur enough but to paint a complete mini 
virtually wait is quite a hard thing to do. So, well, it's, it's, it's easy to do, it's exactly the same as any other thing, you know, but for some strange reason it always looks chalky. Now, that's probably the pigment in it, but um, <clears throat> the uh, I never get a decent effect with white, so I'm just going to try different things, but the I'm quite happy with the way it's turned out using these particular colours, so that's why I've done it in this one. I don't want to change what I'm happy with, or relatively happy with. Um, <clears throat> so we have, this is the uh, medium uh, tone, and then we have the, uh, the white as the highlight, so it, it does look okay-ish. Um, as I say, I'm happy with it, so, <clears throat> you know, it's one of those things, if you, um, as I keep saying, paraphrasing from uh, the god of oil painting, Bob Ross, uh, <laughs> um, when you bought your pot of, pot of paint and your mini, you bought your uh, artistic license with it as well, and you can paint it whatever colour you wish. Depending, of course, if you're doing a specific army, you do the specific army colours. You don't do, you don't substitute, um, or you go as close to to make it look as it's supposed to look. Um, because I mean, I'm not to het up over um, getting the actually specific as long as it's near enough um, the right the, uh, near enough the right colour for what um, you're doing that's all that matters but for things like this where you can make your own colours up do it you know <clears throat> so what do we have next pure red now you're going to find out what team it is are you ready <laughs> there are people who have seen some of these and have twigged and aren't very happy with me but there we are um yeah we have a white all white strip with a red V on the front. Yes, it's St. Helens Rugby League uh, strip. And uh, actually took the design from an Australian rugby team, I think, or uh, Australian rugby, fo uh, uh, Australian football team. But they had, the Australian team had a black V rather than a red one. Um, <clears throat> so uh, there we are. Look, this one, I'm adding a little bit more red into certain areas just to break it up a little bit but the key there is the red V and I'm looking for a name for these. Now we're going over the rough iron parts with the chainmail metal. <clears throat> Not fully, we're keeping some of the rough iron on display but we're giving this a little bit of what, you know, for want of a better word, a highlight. So I'm thinking of calling these something like the, you know, St. Helens, St. Helens something. Now, St. Helens wouldn't be the same way as you'd spell the name of the town. It would be something like C-Y-N-T-E-L-I-N-S, St. Helens. Yeah, it'd be something like that, but I'm not sure how to finish it off. Um, but we'll think of something. If you've got any suggestions, let me know. Uh, don't be rude. <laughs> Uh, right, now we're going to highlight in white here, as you may have noticed. So, all of the um, areas that are going to be lit from above, we're going to be um, picking out, picking those out and highlighting in the white, uh, just to make it stand out that little bit more. Um, I hope you're enjoying the music that's in the background, by the way. It's from a friend, of, it's composed by a friend of mine, Ian Cleverdon. It's uh, from his new album. Um, mine's just gone completely. Confusion clear. <laughs> oh dear. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, uh, as I say, it's a new album. It was only released um, one day last week. I think. I can't exactly remember what date it was released. Well, one day last week of this video being uploaded. Um, <clears throat> And he's kindly given me permission to use uh, some of his music. He's half of a acoustic duo 
um, called The Hewers that hopefully I'll be doing a video fairly soon featuring a track or two from The Hewers um, but in the description of the in the description box of this I will give you a link to where you can buy the album from um, the proceeds of which are going to um, a hospice that um, he's um, decided to donate to for personal reasons to him I'm not going into it here but there we go I hope you enjoy the music and uh, if you do like it then pop across to his site have a look and uh, order it it is a really nice album and uh, <coughs> that is that so we're coming very close to the end of the video but the one thing I do want to point out is the bass as you can see I've uh, primed the bass as well as the mini but as you can also see the mini isn't sitting right in the bass so once I've finished this highlighting I'm going to remove the model from the what would be acrylic or clear acrylic part of the base and as you can see that's what I'm doing here now I'm re removing it from the from the base and I will scrape away on the glue as you can see there <coughs> from the inside of the acrylics around and then obviously I'll uh, smooth off the bottom of the the base part where the miniature is attached to and then glue it back in um, because some of these are a little bit dodgy uh, so you but one thing is you do run the risk of breaking the acrylic if you're not careful but you can get more acrylic from Mantic's website um, so all that being said before I go any further I will be painting the entire base black because uh, why not um, I don't see the point of keeping it clear when the middle bit is a solid colour but I'll be painting it black and if you're interested in Dreadball you can download the rules free from Mantic's website along with all the other games that Mantic do <coughs> so I think I've got everything sorted now so it's get the super glue out get some in the, re in the little down there and pop it in and then as I say just paint it black so that's it for this video I hope you've enjoyed it until next time when we'll be painting one of the other minis from um, Dreadball take care God bless and bye for now stay safe and see you next time